Hello and welcome back to the acreage and it's slightly longer than I'd anticipated since I saw you last. I had hoped to be about a four week update on the installation of the mower. It's now actually eight weeks since the mower has been in. Unfortunately life has a way of sometimes throwing you a few uh, wild cards and we've had a couple of illnesses in the human population in the house and unfortunately we lost our border collie. So it's been a more subdued entry into autumn than would usually be the case at the acreage. Those events meant that we've spent more time on the M4 and on the motorways to and from sorting out issues um, than spending time here. That would usually mean that when I came back the garden and the lawns particularly would have gone into Borneo mode and on top of everything else you have quite a long length of grass to be cutting. I have to say since Ambrose has taken over, for that is the name he has been given, um, the lawns have been absolutely no issue whatsoever. And you'll notice I've said lawns plural. We'll come on to that in a moment, but Ambrose is now cutting four of the five areas at the acreage. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the six questions that have been asked most since I've installed the mower here. In future videos, and I appreciate we're running up towards um, autumn and winter now, but in future videos, we're gonna look at what it's like to own a robotic mower and what changes that means to the way you use the garden and the lawns. And then also I'll take a look at what you might want to think about this side of spring if you're thinking about getting a robotic mower next year. So starting with the first of those questions and it's the one that gets asked most often, do you notice a difference in the lawn? Here we have the same shot of the same parts of the garden, but taken around six weeks apart. On the left hand side, the lawn before Ambrosia was in place, and on the right hand side, the lawn since it's been mowing it. You'll see that I've frozen the frame. The hedge on the clip on the left is greener. It's yellowed over the summer. The grass has done just the opposite. You'll see that there is now much more of a green sort of verdant feel it looks much healthier generally. As we turn around, I'll just stop the frame here. The circles of ryegrass and the yellow thatching and the moss on the left, that's all completely gone now on the right. And as we continue around shortly, you'll see that that continues into the far right hand corner. All that yellow thatch and dead grass has gone. It's worth me pointing out that I've done nothing to this grass. It hasn't been fertilized. It hasn't had any other form of treatment. The only change since these two shots were taken was the mower that has been used to cut it. So I think in my view, the answer to this question is fairly clear. Yes, I can see a difference in the lawns. In summary, they're much greener, they're much nicer looking, and generally they're just much nicer to spend time on. And that brings us to the second question. How do you manage all the thatch? Doesn't it tread in the house? Those sorts of questions. Um, simple answer is I don't need to. I haven't taken any cuttings off the lawns since July. And I used to fill three large green recycling bins a fortnight. There's such a frequent cut and it's so fine that it quickly gets taken down into the grass by worms and other things. And I don't have to deal with any of it. And none of it comes into the house. Third question, why did I go for a wired solution right now there are GPS solutions available? This seems to split robot mower owners and I don't take a political stance either way. Ask me in five years time when AI has improved a little and I might go for a wireless solution, but for now a wired one suits me well here. For those of a certain vintage, here's the science bit. Most robot mowers use a combination of GPS and the location in relation to the base station. And the base station is usually built into the home station for the mower. It certainly is in the Ambrosio cases. And by measuring the relative distance between those, the mower can understand where it is in any particular time on the lawn. Of course, things improve and you now have greater GPS coverage. So the accuracy of those signals improves and many suppliers have started to build in repeater stations. Now, those repeater stations cover areas where there might be GPS blind spots. 
GPS at the acreage isn't great to start with, so why might we need those repeaters? Because each of those repeater stations would need to be wired and powered and positioned. Well, let's take a look. At the front of the house, I'm some 110 metres away from the base station. This lawn is also about 10 feet higher, and between the base station and this front lawn is a retaining wall, the house, my neighbour's house, so the GPS location and signal to the base station from here is going to be low. So I'd need at least a repeater station out here. I also have quite an amount of trees. Um, if you're looking at a canopy coverage of around 20%, then that's going to start giving you some GPS issues. I also have a whole run of a very high hedge. That beach hedge in the background is over two metres high, and both of those can produce GPS shadows. At the front of the building, I have a quite well-defined but poorly bounded boundary between the grass and the drive. Now, AI may improve and AI may be good enough to tell the difference between the grass and the drive, but it would have to be very good. And I don't want to damage either the mower or to start having gravel being thrown around. So that was a consideration, as is the lawn on the other side of the drive which has a narrow planting of lavender between the grass and the drive. I don't really want to lose that and so I can be more controlled with a wired implementation at this time at this location. Also I have trees and poorly defined bedding and on the right hand side here you can see that there's a narrow gap that the mower has to negotiate to get from the front to the back. And here you can see the wires still going through in place before they were put in. That was in the testing phase. But, but in order to get the mower to go from the back to the front, I'd probably need a couple of repeater stations here and maybe one more in the paddock because of the height difference between that and the lawn. So for all those reasons, the number of repeater stations was getting to be quite large. I've also got areas where I really like the control that you can get with the wire. I can keep it away from damaging the mower on that fairly unforgiving stone wall and I can also control how close it gets to that wall so that with one slip I don't lose my sunflowers. That takes us on to the next question. How long do you think it will be before you can roll these out to all the areas? Well here you can see that I'm already cutting the first lawn. The good news is I've also managed to roll this out to the upper lawn. Just take a look at the tilt on this mower as it comes towards us here. The flex and the horizontal axis is really great on this model to allow you to get through some undulating territory. Uh, this lawn was added around two weeks after the initial installation and was fairly easy to do. In the next video I'll show you how I linked the two areas. They're each set up as individual mowing areas so that means that I can schedule each of them to be cut as I want throughout the week and it was no hassle at all in terms of getting the perimeter wire around here so a very good add-on. However it's not only the rear of the premises that we've been able to include the mower. At the front of the house I have two grassed areas. The first is a long and fairly wide strip between myself and the neighbour. This has proven to provide quite a bit of entertainment to neighbours who come out and guess where the mower might be going next and are fascinated at how it manages to cut everything in a random pattern. So it's handled this strip really well and provided some brownie points to the neighbourly relationships as I'm cutting a little bit of their strip as well at the same time. And across that driveway into the main front drive you see we've got the fourth area. As an aside, that green bin on the left is uh, a large garden recycling bin. You used to have three of those, and each of those costs around £60 a year if you want to take those on. They were mainly taking lawn clippings. I don't need them now because of the mulching effect of this particular mower, so I can go down to one of those at the next renewal, which is about £120 a year saving that I wasn't expecting, so thank you very much. And that brings us on to the next question. How noisy is the Ambrosio 4.0 Elite? Well, let's have a listen as it comes close. It's currently about four feet away.
and I'm not using a scientific decibel reader, I'm just using a phone app, but that came in at 58 decibels, which is about the same as a large desk fan and way lower than a normal lawnmower, so it's fairly quiet. A, an extra for you here, because we've got a joint sixth. How do I cope with an unsightly perimeter wire? You may have seen this advert on TV where there's a chap in Central Park who's saying, singing and dancing, and they say, I didn't know you had dandruff. And he goes, I don't. Well, this question reminds me a bit of that. So here we've got two videos. The first on the left shows you the installation wire on the day of install. So fairly prominent, pegged about every meter, and you can certainly see it. That's on day one. The video on the right is the same location five weeks later. And if you can see the wire on that, then you're a better and than I gungered in. So if I turn that round and focus in a little closer so that you can just see how tricky it is to actually identify any wire at all. Now I know roughly where it is, it's about 12 inches from the border, which is the prescribed distance for this particular mower, but I'm really struggling to find it. You do have to feel through to find where that wire is, and there we found it. So if I just bring a little bit clear, clear a little grass, there you can just see that green line. Now in five weeks, that cable has been dragged under the roots of the grass and it's pretty much invisible. So to answer the question, how do I handle an unsightly wire? I don't, because I don't have one. And tying with that question was the last one, which was, where can I get one of these mowers? Because Ambrosio seem to be hard to find. Well, they're certainly new to the market, that's true. And so I can give you two places that you can start to look. The first website just showing up is ambrosio.co.uk. Those are the importers uh, and that's their site. They will give you a lot of information about the full range of models that are available from Ambrosio and uh, it's a good place to start. It's probably a bit of a spoiler alert to say there's some good news. They have a dealer map that you can locate your part of the country. And as you can see by the number of those green dots, there's people across the UK, so it shouldn't be too difficult to find one too near to you. An alternative site, um, Mower Magic, which is where I got uh, my mower from, uh, they have a range of Ambrosio and other mowers. So you can take your time, have a look through and see what appeals from their very good selection of materials. You also get a chance to put different manufacturers head to head and I hope you'll agree why I chose the one I did, um, but you can see a wide range there. They also have a useful tool which allows you to measure the area you want to cut. So you can define the space you want to mow, it will calculate the size and from that you can determine which mowers might be suitable for the area of grass that you want to deal with. So I'll leave those websites up as we conclude this video. I hope you've enjoyed the top six questions that we've been asked. I will be back much quicker than the gap between the first and this video with a look at how we've managed to get the mower into four different areas on either sides of the house. Um, see you next time.